Yo, what's happening guys? Coming at you today with a frequently asked question that I get all the time. That is, or it's a variation of a few different questions. What is clipping? Why is my amp clipping? How do I stop clipping? This is a very popularly asked question. So clipping and distorting is one and the same thing. But before we get into that, I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. So you know every time I upload a new video and something else that'll help with that is if you hit that little bell notification. So it'll give you the notifications every time I upload a new video and you'll see it first. You'll be able to get here and get this information. So getting into the video uh, juicy parts, I guess you could say, we're going to address what is clipping. So clipping is is become more popularly known here recently or in the last, I would say, few years because a lot of people own their bass knobs are having clipping indicators. But what good is a clipping indicator if you have no idea what that is for or what is telling you? So basically when a clipping indicator is going off on a remote bass knob or on the JP style of amplifiers, we have clipping indicators on the remote and we also have clipping indicators uh, right here in between here. You can see the clipping indicators. Um, so that lets you know when it's clipping on the amplifier, which is going to be displayed on the remote as well. But if you're back there tuning in and you don't have the remote next to you, you'll know when it's clipping back here. So when your amplifier starts clipping, that's basically is telling you to stop doing that. You're turning it up too far. Some people will also say, I barely have my gain turned up, but I'm still clipping. And it's like when I have my volume turned up, I'm still clipping when I barely have my gain turned up. That's because you're essentially, no matter how you're doing that, you're pushing the amp past its limits. It's not able to give you any more than it's already giving you. The further you turn it up, the more you clip it, the worse it is for your subwoofer or your speaker. So clipping, I would say, is the number one cause of subwoofer or speaker failure because you're basically trying to make your speaker go up and down at the same exact time. A clipped signal, like if you have a good wavelength coming out of your amplifier, it's going to be a nice rolling wave like this. But if you have a clipped wavelength is going to basically be straight up straight over and straight down which that's what it is clipped off at the top you don't have that nice round peak on the top and that's what's causing your subwoofer or speaker to heat up and fail prematurely so if your um, amplifier is clipping or you have an indicator and it's, it's clipping that's letting you know that you're pushing it too far uh, another way or another, I guess, analogy of this would be, or comparison would be if you're running, if you're running as fast as you can and somebody comes behind you and starts pushing you on your back, what do you start doing? You start tripping or clipping, if you want to say that. You're basically being, you're giving it all that you can, but somebody's trying to make you go even faster, but you just can't. So that's your amplifier when you're pushing it too far. You're giving it all you can, but you don't have any more to give, so you start clipping. So basically that's an explanation of in running terms of what's happening to your amplifier. So that's what clipping is and that's what causes it. it the uh, broken or the clipped wavelength, that's what clipping is or also known as distortion. And also why is your amplifier doing it? Because you're pushing it too hard. It's like if you feel like, say you have a 2000 watt amp and a 2000 watt rated sub like a sundown xv3 a 2000 watt rating on that subwoofer is going to be very underrated so if you're only giving that sub 2000 watts it's probably going to sound like man this thing is barely moving but my amplifier is clipping because it's doing everything i can to give it a 2000 that 2000 watts but in all actuality it could use 3000 to 4000 watts to really power it like it should be so you need to get a bigger amplifier to get the subwoofer moving like it needs to be and not have it clipping. So some other ways to decrease clipping coming from your amplifier, if you do feel like you have a bigger amplifier, say you have a 4,000 watt amp on a 2,000 watt sub and you feel like it's still clipping prematurely, this could be because of subpar electrical. You'll need to do your alternator upgrade, your big three upgrade, get uh, more batteries or more battery reserve and also bigger wire, zero gauge wire or two watt wire. This is going to help you with um, keeping your amplifier, get basically supplying it with the power it needs to create the power it can because again if you are a runner and you are uh, forced to breathe through a snorkel 
and you can barely breathe. This is exactly, it's pretty much the same thing when you're trying to make your amplifier do something and you're choking it off on the electrical supply. It can't perform like it needs to be because you're starving it on the electrical supply side. So it can't create the power that it usually could if it had the proper electrical. It takes power to make power. Um, so that's ways that you can make your amplifier like perform like it's supposed to be. Uh, on the next thing on um, these clipping indicators, they're on. They're becoming more popular on more uh, amplifiers. So you can be on the lookout for these. If not, the way that you would know if your amplifier is clipping is by testing it with a multimeter uh, or an oscilloscope. You can. I'm sorry, not a multimeter, but an oscilloscope which is basically a high-tech version of what you're getting here. If your amp doesn't have a clipping indicator on it or your remote doesn't have a clipping indicator on it, then there's no way of you knowing. And a lot of people are like, oh, I can just listen to a system and know if it's clipping or I can just listen and hear distorting. I've been doing this for 30 years. No, you can't. You, if you are hearing it, it is so far past where clipping starts at it's not even funny so most of the people that say this they've never installed properly so you need to have the proper tools we also have the tools from smd that'll test the um the signal coming out of it so you know it's not going to be clipping or you can get an oscilloscope there's a few different ways of doing it uh, so people that say they adjust stuff by ear are just guessing i mean i can guess a bunch of things and be completely wrong so don't go off of just guessing even though you may get lucky every now and then, that's not an accurate way of doing it. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been getting this question a lot here lately, and I wanted to address this so I could help a lot of people out. If you found this information helpful, then come and shop with us at downforsoundshop.com. I greatly appreciate it. And you can grab yourself one of these beautiful JP amplifiers or any of the other stuff that we have on the website. So we'll see you in the next one. Later. Yo, what's up guys? If you want to see more of the hot content that you just saw in that video, be sure to follow me on all my social media channels from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, The Life of Price is my handle on there. Also have Down for Sound Shop on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget Snapchat as JPD4S. Check out all the hot content on there as well.